My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss the theory behind the motility test. As the name of this test implies, this test is able to determine whether or not bacteria are able to move. Okay, now let's go into some theory behind the test. So typically most agars that we use have an agar concentration of about 1.5%. This concentration is enough to prevent the movement of most bacteria. In the motility test, we want to allow mobile bacteria to actually be able to move. Therefore, we're going to use a much thinner agar concentration. So rather than the typical 1.5% agar, our concentration is only going to be about 0.4% agar. Therefore, it's going to be thin enough to allow bacteria to actually move. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're actually going to take an inoculating needle and stab a hole in the agar. In fact, you can see here in this negative test, you can actually see the hole that was stabbed okay, with the inoculating needle. Now, you notice that in both the negative test and positive test, we have a red color. What is that? The red color comes from a molecule called TTC, which is also known as tetrazoleum salt. It turns out that TTC is a chemical that initially is colorless. However, uh, bacteria can use TTC as an electron acceptor. So through bacterial metabolism, whenever they transfer an electron to TTC, TTC becomes reduced and it actually changes color to red. Therefore, a red color anywhere in here is indicative of the presence of bacteria. So, in general, if we have the bacteria confined to the place where we stabbed the agar, they're not mobile. They're not motile, we would also say. They don't move because they just stayed here, right? However, if we find this red color diffuse throughout the, the tube, that means the bacteria were actually able to move away from the stab. They actually moved and, and propagated throughout the tube. So this test is positive for motility, whereas this test in the middle is actually negative. And again, the reason we have this red color throughout the tube is because the bacteria propagated. They were motile, so they moved throughout the tube. And remember, this agar also has TTC, and so the bacteria over here and over here and over here and here, everywhere, we're able to use that TTC as an electron acceptor, and so they gave it electrons and it turned red. Okay, so that's the basis behind the motility test. Now, here's some more on the results for the motility test. Over here, we have a positive result. How do we know this motility test was positive? Well, we obviously have red everywhere here. We can clearly see that it's diffused away from the stab, okay, that was made by the inoculating needle. Um, this one's a lot more obvious, okay? In this negative result right here, we clearly see there's no diffusion of the bacteria or the redness away from that stab wound. The redness, the TTC, is confined to that stab, okay? So this would be a negative result. Now, if you looked at this initially, you might say, well, that's a negative result. But this over here is actually a positive result. The reason it's positive is even though the red is not as obvious as it is over here on the left, we do see there is some red diffusion away from the stab, meaning that the bacteria were actually able to move away from that stab, okay, from the inoculating needle. Therefore, this is going to be a positive result. This one is negative because, again, we clearly see no diffusion away from that stab. Okay, so basically when we classify something as negative in the motility test, so non-motile, there can't be any red diffusion, any, away from the stab. If it's a lot or even just a little, as you can see here, it's going to be a positive result for motility. All right, and we will see a demonstration of this in a demonstration video that will be posted. Thank you.